guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to do my high-end YouTube made me buy it tag. I last night my time filled filled filmed the affordable edition so you guys that will be up before this one so the link will be down below if you want to go check that out but I basically had too much stuff to make one video like that video would have been way too long had I actually just made it into one so I decided to split it. In this video there is no skincare or hair care products like what the affordable one was because I do not buy expensive hair care, skincare, things like that. I buy stuff I can get at my supermarkets, chemists and things like that. Um, I have tried a couple of high-end things skincare wise but I was not overly um, impressed with them but uh, maybe one day but at the moment I'd rather spend the more money on my makeup because my skincare is working. So if you guys want to see the YouTube made me buy it high-end products that I have just keep watching. My first actual product here is the Laura Mercier oil free foundation primer. This I have actually used like two-thirds slash just under half of it and I am very sad. This I basically do only use in the winter. In the summer it is too nourishing for my skin. I basically don't use primers in the summer because it just is an extra layer in my skin that I don't need. Um, I mainly just only wear makeup now pretty much when I'm filming unless I'm doing something specifically nice like if I'm going out with my friends or something but however in the winter when my face dries out or if I just want a lot more of a smooth hydrating nourishing feeling this is exactly what I want this product is something that hurt to buy and it still hurts because I hardly use it it is the Fasali Volcanic Elixir Face Oil. I didn't want the unicorn one because in my mind I was like, it's pink. I hate putting pink based things on my face because I, my face is already red enough. I don't need to use like a pink primer, pink oil. The unicorn one just wasn't for me. And I wanted to buy a face oil to mix in with my moisturizers and things like that to try and combat my oiliness. So I ended up picking this up from, I believe it was Sephora or the Fasali webs. I can't remember. Um, but this is yeah, the hydrating Polynesian beauty oil um, obviously and I don't use this on its own I mix it in with my moisturizer but the reason why it hurts like I just forget that I own this I cannot lay this down because it leaks I think that's just something I think it's something I did to the bottle I don't know but I can't lay it down because it leaks so I have to keep it standing up and none of my other skincare bottles and things are this small and short so this gets shoved to the back of my skincare pile stuff and I forget that I own it I for so long have been wanting to go and buy like a different face oil and then I remembered I had this so now that it's winter I am probably going to use this a little bit more but it just, I bought it with the intention of using it and then I forget that I own it because it gets shoved to the back. I have the Stila One Step Correct Face Primer. This is only the small size and I have to say with me not being massively obsessed with face primers, I think I will just continue to buy the small size because the small size of this is nearly $40 um, here. So... Yeah, but this is the one step correct. So this is the one with the green, the purple, and the pink. When you mix it all together, it just makes like a really pale, almost light purple. Like I have to say the purple does take over. But this purchase was purely because of Shannon, Shan XO. Her videos from about, I want to say 2013 approximately to a little bit older, she used to use this primer all the time that and the bare minerals one not the original prime time i think it was the color correcting prime time that one it was yellow i think i can't remember but she used to use this all the time so a couple of years ago i bought this and decided to try it i hated it for so long because i wanted my makeup to last now i'm not wearing as much makeup and i don't really necessarily need it to flat out last Plus, I have my products and my routine that will make it last. Um, I am going to use some other primers and things like that. Like today, I used the Laura Mercier one. Normally, wouldn't have used that at all if I was going to keep makeup on for a few hours. But this smooths out my skin 
not as much as a silicon primer but more than other normal primers so i mean this smooths out my skin by making it nourished and hydrated this does the same thing but like smooths it out even more slightly more silicony but nowhere near like a silicon primer this creates a beautiful glow on my face and i have to say it really does even my skin tone and correct and it leaves my face with a really bright look i have my mac lipstick here this is the only mac this is the only actual high-end lipstick i own i have a couple of uh dosa colors liquid lipsticks other than that i don't have any high-end lip products basically i was obsessed with lip products for a while there which is why i bought the nick suede vault and everything but then all of a sudden I just went off it even now like I barely wear lipsticks if I wear makeup now basically the only time I wear a lip color is when I'm filming even when I go out with my friends and things like that I don't wear a lip product I just wear my lip balm because when I'm eating and drinking and things like that this lipstick here is um, one of the eBay $1 ones I believe it's in the color 27 obviously matches my jacket I can hardly feel it on my lips now and you know it doesn't come off it doesn't transfer or anything but the second I go to eat this will sort of melt down and go really goopy so that's why I don't wear products like that but I have one MAC lipstick and this is in the color velvet teddy I bought this because everyone and their mother was wearing this color and they loved it and I have a massive love-hate relationship with this I love the formula I have to say it is a really nice is this a matte yes I think the Mac matte formula is a very very nice one very comparable to Maybelline which is probably why I own like 20 Maybelline lipsticks and like one Mac one um, but I do have to say I do really like the MAC formula. If I had to choose one formula high-end, it would probably be MAC. Um, but I have a massive, massive love-hate relationship with this particular colour. There are some times I will put it on and think I absolutely love it. It is the best lipstick I've ever worn. I have this liquid lipstick, which is actually one of the eBay $1 ones as well, in the colour 26. It's a very, very similar colour. And I, late, like, again, have a massive love-hate relationship with these. And sometimes I will go months and months and months without wearing this. The last time I wore this, I think, was my brother's birthday, like, two years ago. Honestly, I'm not joking. Um, there's only a very few products, uh, lip liners and things like that, that I can wear with this. On its own, when I'm very fair, this colour, I do not like it on me. I find it to be way too orange. However, now that I have, I don't know, matured a little bit, I want to say, and I like those really muted rosy tones like that NYX Soft Spoken suede lipstick, I never would have worn that in my life. I'm beginning to like these colours on me a little bit more. So... Maybe if I had a different colour, I would have loved this and probably used it up by now. But uh, this colour, yeah, I have a massive love-hate relationship with it. I love it enough not to get rid of it because the very specific times I do wear it, I absolutely love it. But I don't wear it enough to really say that, yes, it's amazing. Um... I actually want to go and try and buy some more MAC lipsticks just to see. Uh, I want to try and find like an amazing nude. I still haven't found my perfect nude lipstick yet. Um, so I want to go and try and have a look. But my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation, again, is a very big YouTube made me buy it purchase. Um, inspired by Casey Holmes and even like Taylor. I know um, Taylor doesn't like this foundation, but she did a first impression review foundation friday or whatever on it i mean even if they don't like it people were mentioning it and i thought i have to try it i wore this foundation to my year 12 formal and it was utterly beautiful i have maybe one use left in this and i desperately want to go buy another one i'm going to buy one for my birthday like a treat to myself um, this is an SPF 10 stay in place makeup. I have not found a foundation that looks as good as this just on its own. I can wear it with no primer and I blend it in with a sponge and I can guarantee it always looks perfect. I have Becca highlighters. Now I own two. This one in particular I have at the moment is Pearl. I also own Champagne Pop. I bought Champagne Pop because Jacqueline Hill released it and I was obsessed with her a few years ago. But like... 
Who in their right mind would spend $80 on a highlighter? And I own two of them. Let that sink in. I am actually wearing pearl on my face today, on the tops of my cheekbones, my nose. It was on my cupid's bow, but I think I've covered it up. Um, and that's the glow on my forehead as well. Pearl is basically like a white. It has a mine has a bit of a champagne um, tinge over it because I tend to mix this with champagne pop. But I love both of them for eyeshadows as well as highlighters. So, for example, the Mary Luminizer that I have, I love it as a highlighter, but there's no way I will wear it on my eyes. It looks really weird on my eyes, but these are metallic and, like, chunky enough. Champagne Pop is, like, the most amazing pale gold eyeshadow I think I've ever used in my life. But... I mean, if it wasn't for the fact I bought Pearl because I bought Champagne Pop and I love it. I love the formula. It's just, it's way too dark for me to use when I'm fair. So I went and bought Pearl just so I could mix them together. Plus this is a pure white highlighter and at the time I didn't have a pure white one. It does hurt me to know I spent $80 on one highlighter and I spent, yeah, like I bought two of them, $80 each, not at the same time. I bought Pearl, like I want to say a year and a half after Champagne Pop. Like, I mean, that hurts. $80, that's like twice my car payments. But I mean, it is so worth it. Highlighters are something I would personally say I would rather, like, I'd splurge on those because particularly with me being pale and being so oily, I don't use as much highlighter as, say, someone with drier skin who really wants to illuminate their face. And, like, if I'm wearing makeup to work, I don't put highlighter on. Um, maybe I might on my brow bone and my inner corner, but I don't put highlighter on because I don't want my face to go extra oily. I know what products last and things like that, but if I am sent out the back in the kitchen, I'm around all the oil, and so my, my makeup goes a little bit more oily so I don't wear highlighter to work so I'm not wearing the highlighter all the time when I wear makeup but I do think these are worth it I have my Anastasia self-made palette you guys know this is one of my most loved eyeshadow palettes that I have owned ever this is absolutely gorgeous this purple shade is to die for um, I actually again use this palette for my year 12 formal um, I did end up just using my bronzer in the crease I used hot chocolate because on my eyes this comes out like a little bit more of a purpley chocolate um, as well because I mixed it with a tiny bit of some of the colors from the BH cosmetics Carly Bybel palette so I made it look a little bit more purple and then I can't remember if I used treasure or pink champagne on my lid I might have mixed them both I have a tutorial up actually like really long get ready with me I think I filmed it on my iPad years ago um, of my year 12 makeup I will link that down below but I mean the only color I really don't use in this is spirit rock because it's a black with real chunky purple glitter I hate it when people put blacks with glitter in it I think it's just weird like I mean the more you use it the more it goes matte but it's just it's a no a great big no now I have black on my finger uh, I this color self-made is like my absolute favorite like antique gold um, the color treasure and pink champagne I love mixing them together just on my lid sherbet is a really nice color I will use as like a transition shade hot and cold is really nice but I think it needs to be a bit more metallic and I've even used the color blossom on my lid it is really nice do I think this is her best palette no but this was one of my first ever high-end purchases um, I bought this because I just looked at the colors and thought it would be really nice and that I would use it and I definitely do when I did my Sephora haul this and the next palette I'm going to talk about uh, were my two things I just walked in and picked up straight away when the next palette is no surprise to you and it is my Kat Von D shade light palette I probably if I was not watching YouTube or take participating in YouTube I probably would have ventured into some high-end palettes eventually but I don't know if it would have been these specific ones. I have no idea. But the Shade Light palette is definitely, definitely a YouTube made me buy it type of purchase. These shadows are no longer my absolute favorites. They work and they look really nice. Every time I use them, I can guarantee I get a really nice look. And, you know, it's a perfect neutral palette if you want one. 
However, I find ColourPop, even my newer Anastasia palettes, things like that, those eyeshadows are becoming so much better. And I don't know if it's because I've had these for so long, but these were always kind of dry, um, a little bit more chalky matte colours. Um, and I mean, they still are a little bit. I've had this palette for five years now. So, I mean, it's had some wear and tear and I have used the living heck out of it. But at the same time, like these are no longer my Holy Grail eyeshadows. This was my go-to Holy Grail palette for so long. I still love it. I still use it all the time and I still do recommend it. But I think that brands like ColourPop are completely overshadowing um, the Kat Von D eyeshadows now this is the only cap one day product i've used once this is used up or if i lose it or something would i repurchase it i don't think so i have my mac soft ochre paint pot and this is a youtube cult favorite everyone loves this everyone uses it and i remember even you know years and years ago people would use this as their eye primers and things like that and this is actually my favorite. I've tried the Urban Decay one and I do not like it. It actually makes my eyeshadow crease um, and my eyelids go a bit oily and gross. And I just, I do not like that one. My specific shade I buy is Soft Ochre because my skin is yellow toned. Have not ever tried Painterly. But this is my second one and I'm like halfway through it. But I think this is something that is totally, totally worth it. I struggle with, I used to struggle really massively with having oily eyelids. Um, I tried to use concealers as eye primers and my eyeshadow would wear off and it would be so bad. But since I have discovered this, like I can use NYX Jumbo Pencils. I never used to be able to since before because they would just crease and go really oily and everything would fall off. And since I started using this, like I can use NYX Jumbo Pencils. I can use cream eyeshadows. I can use liquid eyeliner. My eyeshadows stay on. It's a really nice primer. It covers everything up. There was one time I had like for a period of time, I had a massive issue with getting concealer and stuff to sit on my nose. I'd put this over it. Of course, my NARS Laguna Bronzer is a YouTube baby buy. Never in a million years would I have spent $65, actually I think it's now $68, on a bronzer. This is absolutely disgustingly messy. That's what I hate about this rubber packaging. I am so glad e.l.f. changed theirs to slightly more harder plastic because it, it's gross. Um, the Laguna Bronzer, I actually used to have such a love-hate relationship with it. I would use it one day and it would look so orange and gross. And then I'd use it the next day and it would look like the most amazing color ever. So some days, depending on what uh, foundation I use, it does look too orange. But I think I figured out how to apply it in the best way. And yes, I would repurchase it. It does blend beautifully on my skin. It looks really nice. It has enough of a shimmer to where it doesn't look like a flat matte. A lot of people I know used to use it on their eyes, but to me, it's way too shimmery for me to just put bronzer in my crease. So if I'm doing one of those looks with just, you know, the bronzer in my crease and some mascara, I can't use the Laguna for that because you can see that it is shimmery. And I have used freshly clean brushes with no product on them whatsoever. And it has still been way too shimmery. So it's nothing that has come into contact with the brush. It's the bronzer itself. I have to be very careful with mine because I dropped it and it completely shattered. So I am very upset. So I no longer travel with this. I keep it in the very back of my drawer and when I use it, I'm very careful. Um, but I do totally think this is worth it. I do like it. It has lasted me for quite a while. Like, I mean, I've had it for like two, three years now. So it has lasted me a long time and I do think it is worth it. I did have a love-hate relationship with it. I can't use it to contour. It's not quite the color I use, um, but it is beautiful as a bronzer. The MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. This is 100% because of Jacqueline Hill. I know so many people are disliking her at the moment, but this is the truth. She used to use the MAC uh, Pro, Long Con Pro Longwear Concealer for years and years and years. And when I was first starting my channel and first starting like to wear makeup and everything, that was when she was starting to blow up in the YouTube community. So a lot of her videos were very, very popular. I did buy this concealer because of her. Mine's been laying down and there's barely anything left in it. But I did buy this because of her. Because at the time, it was probably the most full coverage concealer. She actually said that it had like eye priming technology in it. So I did buy it to see if it would 
work for that because you know i didn't buy eye primers and stuff like that um but it doesn't work on me i cannot use it for an eye primer it is still way too creamy and things like that however if i am going to anywhere that i just want to look perfect for this is the concealer I go to. I have hourglass blushes. I only have one that I've picked out, but I have three. Um, my specific favorite color of the ones I own is Diffused Heat, and I freaking love this. I never would have guessed that this like a bright, I want to say like plum pink would have been my favorite, but it is, and I absolutely love it. Never in a million years would I have ever chosen to buy probably anything from Hourglass. In my mind, Hourglass, Giorgio Armani, possibly even Lancome, you know, Chanel, um, YSL, those brands to me were completely off the off the table even now like this is the probably the most expensive products i own i still even now really really don't i really want to try things from like ysl and that i really want to try the all hours foundation and things but i really don't want to commit to buying anything from those brands even the mini sizes it's like uh no um at the moment i have the money to buy anything i want really but in my mind it's like instead of spending 60 bucks on that foundation i can put that in my savings instead like that's my my way about it but i do totally think these are worth it i love them they give the most beautiful glow when i wear these blushes i tend to actually not really wear much highlighter because these have such a nice glow in them to begin with the mirror is actually a nice size but like yes these are massively expensive but i do think they're worth it but again this is totally something i never would have even looked at if i was not on youtube and you know participating in any of that i never would have even just considered it at all i've got my bare minerals kit so pretty much the bare minerals foundation in general is definitely a youtube made me buy it have i really used these no i bought the shade n10 I was told by the girl who worked at Mecca Maxima, because they had so many different shades in it, um, in the sample kit, she said that this shade would be perfect. She was even a bit paler than me, and she was like, I use that shade. So I thought, great, it'll work. It's so bloody dark. I mean, it looks dark, like almost too dark in the, in the little pot, but when I put it on my face, it is so dark. The only way I can use this color, honestly, is if I'm at my absolute darkest self-tanner. So that means two layers, letting it develop for like four hours and then doing it again the next day type of massively, insanely dark. And that means using like my Estee Lauder Double Wear and then using this. Thank God this is actually the right tone, but it comes and it's called Fairly Light. So I've got no idea. This comes with the original and the matte version. I really want to do like a comparison video on these and to see if I can really get these to look as nice. Honestly, I've only used it as a setting powder like twice. Never even used it as an actual foundation. So I want to sit down one day and film a video like what Taylor did to see if she can actually, to see if I can actually get like a foundation coverage with it because I, I don't think I can. After swatching it and everything, it didn't act on my face like what it does on say Shannon. She Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer is again, a massive YouTube made me buy it purchase. This is the old packaging, by the way. I know they have released the new packaging ages ago. That's how long I've had this for. But first off, it smells amazing. It smells like chocolate, which is like the best thing ever. And as you can see, I've used a lot. And I do really, really like this bronzer. For a while there, I didn't actually use it because I did think it was too orange and too warm. But since I have switched up brushes and figured out what brushes work best, this is actually pretty much, I think this is like my perfect bronzer color. I'm using my L'Oreal bronzer today and it is slightly too orange. This is not, since I've had the L'Oreal bronzer that's too orange, I think this one's perfect. Um, first off, it smells like chocolate and it blends perfectly on my face, looks amazing and matte, stays all day. I love using it in my creases, eyeshadow. It is really, really nice. My last product is the MAC Prep and Prime 
uh, Fix Plus. This is just the original scent in a great big bottle, obviously. This is still the original bottle that I have. Obviously, I don't have much left, but this is the original bottle I bought in like 20... 15 or something like that. Um, I have used this many ways. I've used it to make my eyeshadows more intense. I've used it as a hydration spray. I used this like a couple of times like when I, my face was really sunburnt. I actually used to use this like just to hydrate my face throughout the day. I've tried using this as a setting spray and I do really, really like it. However, personally for me, I think next time I will be buying the smaller bottle um, because I it says this has a two year life and I've had this for like four and a half. Um, 100 ml bottle. I don't like the original scent at all. I do not like the scent of this one. I'm glad they have come out with the other scents because I really, really do not like the smell of this. But I do have to be very careful when I use this, particularly if I use it to um, intensify an eyeshadow. If I absolutely soak my brush with this, it makes my eyes burn. And I don't mean like my eye itself, like, oh, I've got it in my eye. I mean, it makes my eyelids burn. I don't know why, and it's been like that since I got it, so it's not like it's gone off or anything. Um, I do have to be very careful. A couple of times, if I feel like my face is really hot, kind of like I've just heated up too quickly and my my face is getting a bit warm, I can't spray this on my face. Um, I do have to be yeah, very careful. I don't know if, does this have rose water in it? I have no idea. It doesn't tell you the actual ingredients on the back. I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to rose water. I'm not allergic to it, but it does um, upset my skin. But yes, I do. Sometimes my face is very temperamental, um, but I do really like this. I just think personally for me, I'll buy the small bottle because yes, the big one lasts for a while, but I've had it for twice as long as you're supposed to. So I, I do think it isn't time to repurchase one. I will use up this little bit that's left, but yeah, definitely a smaller one. I think if, if those little scented ones come to Australia, I want to try the cucumber one um, because I love cucumber stuff. Okay, guys, this was my high-end YouTube made me buy it. So if you sat through this entire video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button that's in the corner down there. Um, these products will be listed in the description box down below in case you missed one or, you know, I didn't go about it in depth enough. If you have any questions or, you know, suggestions for other products you want me to try, things like that, please let me know. Also, when you hit the subscribe button down there, hit the little bell so you can get notified when I upload other videos. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.